Welcome to Pandora's Box. You are listening to Aspen Weight Radio, and it is also the second podcast <laughs> that we're also doing. So we're filming this. We're putting it on YouTube. Excited. So if you like what you're listening to today and you want to look at our visages, our visages, you can go on YouTube, mm-hmm. type in Pandora's Box, and you'll Check see me out. staring wistfully into your eyes Loving right now. into the camera screen. You can't hear me, but <laughs> if you could see me. My gaze would be telling you a thousand words. <laughs> Hope you guys are having a good afternoon. Thanks for being here with us this afternoon. Um, we're really enjoying the new like format that we're doing. Lots of just sort of informal open chats. Form. Yeah, I feel like we can like cover like a lot of um, interesting subjects and stuff in like a very natural way. Like ever since we started doing, um, since me and uh, Drew, uh, the Drew, the man of many names like myself, started um, doing the radio shows. It's been really important for me to like keep it authentic. I think there's like a problem nowadays, whether it's you watching the news or like a lot mm. of other radio stations, um, things like that. It's like everything's like overly rehearsed, and mm. you, like you feel after you be a certain way, mm. and maybe like the man, whoever the man is, like your boss might be like there, you know, yep. ready with his cane, yeah. ready to slap your hands if like you you say anything that's off script. Yeah, I just really don't like the fact that stuff that like you know mm. media's like that nowadays, and I think that's one of the reasons why people much prefer listening to like podcasts and stuff yeah like, man that's it that's just gonna say like that's why podcasts are so beautiful cause it's yeah just, it's open open for i think like probably in like 1990 which is the year when, when me and uh, drew were both born oh, yeah. um i think that probably like i mean obviously i have no idea but i think that probably like a high percentage of the population at the time would have said watch the news mm. just like bbc news itv news yeah but although actually in, in 1990 i think it was still called htv mm. but you get what i'm um, you get my drift anyway i think people would have just watched the mainstream news like probably 90 percent of the population maybe yeah. nowadays i don't even know if it'd be 50 percent no because i think people don't even know if they can trust it nowadays mm. and yeah, as you said you just know that somebody's reading off a script yeah, I was you know? thinking the thing with that. Like, you know, you got to have like a, a TV license at home. Yeah, that like, I was thinking about the amount of people now that must just like watch Netflix and Prime and things like that, and actually don't yeah. don't have a TV. Like, I don't actually have a TV in my house. I have one in my bedroom, yeah. but but that's not connected to TV. It's like I use it for like Netflix and stuff. Yeah, Netflix. Amazon and then Prime. I have a projector in my living room. Hector, Hector the projector, yeah. and that's literally just um, yeah, just connected to. It's so much better. Like I remember the first scene when YouTube came out. And just and and like you could just you could just type. It was so amazing that you went from half into you know if you missed your favorite TV show like you would just miss it forever. But yeah. like but like but now like that oh, you can. Yeah. You, you, I remember YouTube. I'd be like oh I remember like downloading like films of like Dimebag Daryl and stuff yeah. like when we first had like like torrents and stuff yeah. like that and just getting like um, LimeWire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> things like that remember the long wire days yeah literally just destroyed my pc yeah. i remember just by downloading loads yeah, of stuff yeah you crazy yeah you know what i mean just like yeah, you gotta watch that you what was it like blue wall of out. death was that what it was called oh. a blue wall of death oh my PC. yeah yeah blue screen of death yeah blue screen of death i had i had a pc in my like yeah. bedroom when i was a teenager Bias, i remember right. one of our mates nikki c was like oh yeah but like i'll download line wire on your pc and you can just get whatever you want on it <laughs> So I was like, at a oh. price, <laughs> yeah, yeah, at the price of destroying your PC. Yeah. So it was all good until um, my PC just didn't work. Yeah, basically. But um, you know that choice, that choice of just being able to watch whatever you want now, it's opened yeah. up so many more possibilities. Yeah, and I think it's like when you're not watching like a series, like on Netflix or Amazon or Disney, whatever app is your preference. Hmm. Um, you know, you're usually getting the information. You're like good information about actual stuff mm. more from reputable sources that you found like, yourself yeah like like honest sources so like you know podcasts yeah so yeah. i mean as as like you know i i watch a lot of jre podcasts i just joe i like joe rogan joe rogan i've got a lot in common with him mm. do you know what I mean we both are sort of mm. like workout fitness nuts but we both mm. love nature mm. spend a lot of nature we're also both sort of like family man i'd say very inquisitive as well like you mm. you, know, you know you're very much like that as well like joe rogan's super inquisitive isn't he like, and and not really like attached to like beliefs idea or ideas yeah. we just want to know stuff Explore them all. yeah <laughs> we just want to know stuff and it's yeah. like i'd like to think as well like don't care about being right. I think some people, they care so much about being right to the extent where they've forgotten even like what the point yeah, of information more, is, you know? It, yeah, they're they're tied not, to their ideas. Whereas They want to be right rather than yeah, true. Whatever the truth is, like that yeah. should be the priority. You That's know? it. Like, I don't care about being right or wrong. I just want to know the truth. Yeah. You know, if yeah. someone can, if come, someone can provide me with evidence that makes me think, do you know what, actually, 
Mm. I was thinking about something in this way, mm. but now I've been provided with this evidence. It's actually changed my mind. Yeah. Then that's great. Do I'm not going to be just like, I'm not going to just be like, yeah, like irrationally defending this 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 uh, archaic idea that I've had <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like I'm in this club now. Yeah. So it's like like almost like a fo- you know when you see like a diehard football fan that's like yeah. Millwall versus yeah. you know I'm not gonna just be like part, I'm not it's like part of a club, man. Yeah. Like so yeah, like yeah. It, when you were saying that that you know that that um, expression like the truth will set you free. Oh, it's like yes. like you know what I mean? Like that's what just came into my head when you were talking then because it was like. You know, it is. It's like if you if you res- if you restrict yourself over like you know, but having to be right about something, then yeah. then you're just restricting yourself. But if you're just open to truth, then yeah, it's like you're 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 adaptable, aren't you? To yeah, definitely. It is. I think as well, like other, other guys, just just while we're on the on the um the topic of it, really, just want to like give a shout out to some inspirational people. I think who I watch or listen to watch Anderson do their podcast like on a regular basis. I think like uh, like Jocko Willink. Um, who's like a an ex Navy SEAL, US Navy SEAL, mm. just a super nice guy. Black and white podcast, they aren't they? Yeah, mm. and he's he usually like ninety nine percent of the time he has like ex um, military personnel. But I remember I watched this. My favorite one of his was um, he had this ex SAS, no SBS, Special Boat Service guy. Oh, I think I think it was S- I think it was SBS. <laughs> Yeah, because special air, SAS is special air service. SBS mm. is special boat service. Oh, I didn't even know about that one. I think SBS <laughs> is ev- the training is even harder. Oh, I wow. think. Wow. I think if I'm remembering right, but there was a guy called I think it was uh, I think it's been months and months since I listened to it. Um, I think it was uh, Dean Stott, mm. um, an ex SBS guy. He's got a book out. He also um, I think holds like the record for I think he cycled from. The top of something crazy, like the is it called the Pan American Highway? Mm. It's basically it's, it's it's a road that goes from like Canada to the bottom of South America. Wow! You think about how mad that is. That's an entire yeah. continent. Christ that's not like John O'Groats to Land's that's End through countries. Yeah, like mm. John O'Groats to Land's End. Like that's a like I've done half of John O'Groats to Land's End. I did Birmingham to Land's End in three days. Something like. I think it was like something like t- I cycled something like 220 miles in three days, Ooh. which was like pretty taxing. I remember mm. I was pretty tired by the end. Did you lose any weight after that? Like, did you? Did you? Can you remember? Like, I was very lean. Yeah. yeah, I was very lean by the end of it. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine that would just like. Whew, like I remember right. my legs were like, not in like a not in like a way that I built muscle, but I'd like. I remember my legs were like pumped for a couple of days. So like my legs looked muscular for like a couple of days. Yeah. But it wasn't like in a way that I put on muscle and it was permanent. They were just, they were just they like, full. You know when you like, whoa, well, like, you know, you like, you can like, you hear about people saying like they pump up. So before mm. bodybuilders go on stage, they pump up. And before actors do scenes, I remember hearing about like um, Henry Cavill, who plays like, obviously like The Witcher, a lot of oh, other yeah. stuff. You know, he's a big oh, yeah. heartthrob for all the ladies out there. And he, but he's just also like a lovely guy. He seems like a really cool guy. Um, I think one of his nicknames is King of the Nerds. <laughs> one of the things I love about him is that he just, he loves loves playing computer games. He plays like World of Warcraft. Oh, or cool. But I mean, you look at him and he's like, well, like 6'2", six, 6'3", six, mm. jacked guy, you know, like big square jaw. But he's just like a nerd. Mm. I love that. You yeah, know? I yeah, love that, man. you know. But um, <clears throat> like, I know that famously, you know, he like he like pumps up. any when Whenever like, I think they're told to, mm. like by the directors, like before any of his like topless scenes in The mm. Witcher, they're like they're like told to pump up mm. so he has to spend like five ten minutes behind the scene like doing press-ups and doing yeah. curls so that obviously you look all like, and they put oil on them so yeah. that obviously when you're there on the scene you know you you look the best you could possibly look but that's what it was like like but it was like for about three days yeah it was like i put so much blood in my calves and my quads they're like i remember i was yeah. like man <laughs> my legs are pumped yeah and it, like, it's they crazy really that, that, yeah it's after three days that you'd have that much of a difference you know yeah that, but it was like the longest pump of my life because mm. i was like, I work out all the time and like most of the time you work out you will get a pump unless you're like really mm. fatigued or maybe you're really like you haven't eaten enough that day or the day before so like i'm used to having a pump but usually it will fade in about an mm. hour and then you'll go back to more like baseline you know, unfortunately, mm-hmm. you know, everyone wishes they could look like they do when they were, when they were pumped like 100% of the time. But I remember it lasted about three days. Nice, man. Do you know, on that, um, on that, John, on that kind of bike ride. Yeah. Um, do you, did you have to like, did you have to like really like steady yourself with the pace? Like, did you, did you practice that before or did you? No. No. No, I didn't even have a bike. I didn't do any training for it. Oh my God. So you just went straight into that. Well, Cause I can't even imagine cycling that far. This was 2010. Um, so I was 20 at the time and as you know I was that was like an era of time in my life where I was like 
If I did it now, I would definitely do it the right way. Mm. I would buy a bike. I would train. I'd probably train every single day for thought, it. I'm doing that. Yeah, I didn't do any <laughs> training. I mean, I was going to the gym at the time, um, but I was also like... No specific bike training. I also used to, I used to smoke back then. Mm. Um, <laughs> I used to like smoke back then, um, like every day pretty much. Mm. Um, and I used to like party on the weekends and I used to drink a lot of Jägermeister <laughs> at the time. My literally like some days I would get home from work. I worked at the time at this hot choice. tub company in hot tub company in um, Bristol. I'd work like twelve hour days, sometimes more. I would just get home and I would just like drink Jägermeister mixed with Monster <laughs> and smoke. <laughs> so like imagine how that is not good for you. So although my diet was pretty good and I was going to the gym, can you imagine what was going on to my heart with my heart and stuff like that? <laughs> but um, yeah, I did no I did no specific training and then just. Um, just hopped on a bike literally went there and just sort of like hopped on a bike and um by the last day i was i was very fatigued because i didn't mm. do any training for it at all and um yeah the closest i've i've never fainted in my life but the closest i ever came to it was when i completed that last day because mm. i think we'd ended up like a bit behind schedule so you just went you sent it on the last bit like the last i day. remember it got to the point where i'm like i almost uh didn't like give up but almost like decided that i i needed to have a break and I was cycling, um, but then I like, almost like made the decision that I wasn't going to. <laughs> and then when I did that, I almost like flew into like a weird rage. Whoa! And then I hit like another gear, and I remember literally like accelerating off down the road. Yeah. So like, not only did I not stop, I actually then suddenly went like, and then like tanked it off and just like flew off into the distance. <laughs> I know it sounds. So you overcame like a threshold of through your mind. pure rage. F- pure <laughs> rage. Yeah, that's. Like, I remember being like r- full of rage because it was almost like the anger of having to stop. Or, or no, is it? No, it was the anger that almost like uh, I guess that I entertained the thought of like stopping. And because ah. of the way I am as a person, like as you, you know me well enough to know that I'm probably like. If you say um, there, there's a part it. of my brain that is like quite like Spartan. Yeah. In terms yeah. of like you know, it's very much like you know that like it sounds cheesy, but like, almost like no pain, no gain, and almost yeah. like don't want to be like weak. Yeah. You know, don't want to be yeah. like weak. So it's like I guess yeah, I just ploughed on, mm. and then I remember like when I got to the finish line, it was just like my blood sugar levels must have just like been ridiculously mm. low. Mm. I remember I was like driving a van. It's like yeah. we were going to go to like this pub nearby and just like celebrate and like have like a, a mixed grill mm. and stuff. Remember, I just like, started like passing out while I was driving the van. You were driving the van. I was driving the van oh, on the way to the pub. It's probably only like five miles away, just some some <sighs> pub in Cornwall. And I remember like driving the van, and then I started almost like it was like my vision started going like that. Like yeah. you know, it's like oh yeah, it was almost the like you know, like when you watch coming in. The, like, is it like Looney Tunes at the end yeah, when it yeah, yeah, goes yeah, yeah. back? And it's I, happened to me in the shower a few times. Like really, yeah, yeah. And after a couple of uh, black. A couple of extra extracurricular activities with the missus, <laughs> was it? <laughs> Unfortunately not. No, yeah. I just stood up too fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I was. Uh, you could have just said yeah. But, um, <laughs> no, fair play, being honest. But um, yeah, and I remember I was almost like slowly started veering to the left, but it was like a little country lane. And it was like I could. I remember like, you know, it was like the hedges were all just going mm. against the side of the van, and then the person I was in the van was just like stop, and then I got out and then swapped places, and then almost like just like then got in the side, and then. I remember like ate like a whole entire packet of wine gums in about 30 seconds. I remember just like, you know, when you're just like, yeah, imagine putting them all in your mouth and then just chewing them and just yeah. being like, on. <laughs> and I remember then just, I just literally had like a five minute nap and woke up and then I was fine. Went in wow. the pub. I had like a pint of Coke to like top up my sugar levels even more. And then had like a fat mixed grill. Do you know what I mean? Chips, yeah. like all, you know, all these different stuff. It's so interesting how like your fine. mind can like over, overpower your body in those situations. So like yeah. you can literally push through. Like, um, I can't remember what podcast it was on, but it was, t- it was t- a, a um, SES guy talking about it, it might even been like one of those you might have been showing me it or something but right. and he was talking about um, the most intense like parts of the training that they went through on like you know they do that the SES do like that that like block of like a week or a month or whatever where they do that really intense training <sighs> mate it's intense most obviously most people don't pass yeah the and they were saying that so you one can die part doing of it, it yeah you like they were saying all these different things he was doing and then one of the parts were they would go to like it was like in the middle of the winter and they'd go to this um, go to the sea and um and just and they'd been through about like a week of the training up to that point mm. and at that part they are full kitted out with all their gear and everything and they go up to the pier, pier up to the edge of the sea and they've got a fully just all just jump mm. in into the freezing cold water with all the gear on and everything <clears throat> 
and um and like he said that they got out and then and then they would make you strip to your pants and then just jump in again mm. after you've like all like you know been in that freezing water and he said like literally half the people that um that he was with there like like gave up they wouldn't jump in the second yeah. time but he said his mindset he, he said in that situation he was like I knew that uh, he said to himself, like, uh, he knew that the clothes weren't making any difference to like mm. the cold. No, of course And not. he'd just gone in with the clothes on and they're all sodden when he gets out. So it's almost worse. You know what I mean? And it's heavy. Yeah. And heavy and all that and got to swim for it. So he, so he literally thought to himself like, I'm going to be, it's going it, to, you might think that you're more cold because you've got no clothes on, but he knew like, he was like, this is going to make no difference to mm. me. But if I've anything, just done easier, it. Yeah. I've just done it. Easier. So, so, and then he, so he had no problem of just doing it mm. again, but from just from, from a perspective thing, it's just the yeah. power of your mind, you know, just like pushing on. Yeah. I think it's, I, I have the, like so much respect um, mm. for like special forces. As I said, there's like, there's levels to mental and physical conditioning mm. and those guys really are like the creme de la creme yeah like i can't remember what the success rate for special forces is like sas and sbs but it's very low mm. like extremely yeah. low like yeah. like like one percent or something mm. you know like most closest people... i ever got was uh the army cadets uh, <laughs> yox to camp yeah my 13 years old youngest one there yeah. with my bergen on yeah like there was too big for me and everything and quite a good, good that was hard enough as it is mm. but i remember one time on on that camp like one of the things was happened to like it was all in these woods and loads of leaves and it was kind of like autumn and going through and you had to like hide from the other team or whatever and i remember i just went in the bottom of this thing and then literally just got under loads of leaves <laughs> <laughs> and just <laughs> and just literally lied there and it was I was good at hiding man like nice like literally and like it went they, they it call went, you the chameleon it went about an hour and a half yeah and, I've, and they'd all just gone back to the, like, the camp <laughs> and I was just lying in and then you just and stayed my, there for three and, years like, yeah, I just saw like some people like, well, but it got you know it got they'd finished the whole game and exercise and everything, yeah. but I just stayed lying there because I was just like, to show how good you. Yeah, were. I just didn't know like yeah, I thought oh obviously someone's gonna find me, no one did, so I ended up just like wandering back to the camp like yeah, I was yeah. like all right it's stop now yeah <laughs> well that was fun no, yeah. no, i didn't get any recognition for it though did you not no because like, like, yeah. mate where have you been <laughs> yeah it was literally just like and i'm thinking like i'm an sas commander yeah 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 yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's awesome dude yeah it's like it's one of those things i think it's quite interesting it's like um i think that i wasn't it's, it's funny because i've got like quite a military family but just mm. because my old man wasn't Although I heard lots of tales from it growing up from my granddad, because my granddad was in the King's Second Battalion, um, uh, and my great uncle Bill um, is literally one of the last living Royal Marines that mm. served at um, D Day. Oh wow! Um, so obviously I'm hugely proud of that. So shout out to, my, to Bill Waite, um lives in um, in York at Tang Hill in York, um, and apparently my granddad's other br brother um Ivor worked behind enemy lines in Nazi occupied Norway Whoa. blowing up like Nazi um you know they they used like the Norwegian factories there um to, you know to like make uh, you know different shells and yeah different ammunition and and weapons and stuff like that so he would like blow blow them up and then like escape in the night you know Whoa. go on like little covert like That's ships crazy. back to back to Britain and stuff in mm. the pitch black and stuff like that um so obviously I have like a lot of respect for the military and I think if I was maybe introduced to it more like my parents mm. weren't ever like oh would you like to do cadets mm. or oh go to cadet or anything that but i think i would have probably quite enjoyed it and embraced it and i think yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those of it in that as well yeah right? yeah and i think it's one of those it's one of those things it's like i think if you've got that side to you that's almost like a bit of a wild man mm. or wild woman it's like you're gonna go one of two ways you're gonna go almost like the the crazy party in um, getting in trouble yeah. with like the police every uh -huh. now and then, you know what I mean? A th a yeah. Route where you're just like drinking, or you're going to become like a, almost like a badass mm. Royal Marine. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because you need to be crazy, to, a bit yeah, crazy to do both. You need to get it out. It needs to be expressed. You, still, you you, you're not like going to be like a. It's not just like normal run of the mill. Like I want to be a postman or sit at a desk job. People that are going to be like that. You know, mm. you need to have a side to you that's like yeah. embraces the, yeah. the the craziness of. Yeah. You know, as you were saying, doing things like you know, you're going to have to do things like jumping off a pier and freezing cold water. Yeah, you're going to have to. Um, not have a regular sleep cycle. You're going to have to be comfortable with the idea that you might get shot tomorrow. Mm. Um, <coughs> things like that. It's you know? crazy, like how um, you know we go for comfort so much. But the more I think about it, and it's just making me think about like how how 
much it's not so good for you like the actual mm. gains that you get from putting yourself under pressure and actually like like uh, challenging situations like like cold therapy all of that kind of mm. stuff it's like proving like how good that is for your body and stuff but a lot of people like shy away from it like most people and like definitely me from like like childhood and stuff like that i i shied away from all that stuff i saw no benefit in it now but like thinking about it now it's like mm, i want to kind of push myself to more limits and stuff you know yeah i think i think we, me and you are both a bit like that, aren't we? In, try, in terms of like trying to stay like honest with ourselves, in terms mm. of like, you know, the animal kingdom almost. Do you know what I mean? So it's like the wild and like nature. We touched it. This is like sort of t- ties in a little bit with what we were saying a few weeks ago when we were talking about um, like nature and stuff in regards to like the food chain and and like diet and and things like that. But it's like nature can be pretty brutal and we're so like disconnected mm. from it mm. you're in our nice cozy houses yeah. with our heaters but and it, but it's our warm baths mm. but you should like get comfortable with being uncomfortable yes you know yeah. whether it's it's you know, good for you yeah it's definitely good for you and it will make you feel good it's bad for you to be in that comfort all the time exactly. but it's so it's such a weird juxtaposition in your head because you, it's just the norm isn't it you will feel better even if you are knackered right if you get home um and you go out for a run or you uh, or you work Lights out up, or you baby. go for a workout, um, you know, you go and lift weights for, for an hour or, yeah, as I said, or you go, you go and run 10 miles or mm. you go and whatever it might be. It's you hard. Know? That you resistance. Go and, like, yeah, yeah. You go and do Pilates. You go and do some boxing training. You go and do some jujitsu. You go and play, do, you know, join mm. the rugby team, whatever. <laughs> like if you do that, when you get home, you will feel way better and way more accomplished and happier than if you just decided to sit on the sofa for two hours, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah, it's like what we were talking about, like, kind of... Before and then the have pod- a cold shower or bath yeah, afterwards, yeah, it's, just to freaking yeah. cement that, you know? Yeah, because <laughs> we were talking about before the show, like, um, about kind of, like, discipline and things like that, and how, like, because uh, younger, younger Drew was uh, quite a lazy little lad. Uh, yeah, man, just, me and you both. Yeah, yeah. just, like, Just, like, kind partying of, and... Yeah, you know, just um, all that stuff, but... Uh, yeah, like you, you were saying about that, um, your next door neighbor, and and like um, how y- you need to create routine in your life mm. to uh, because you know what happens when you don't. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. a lot of these people, like, I'd always look at these people that like were very successful or had all these like routines and that were proper on it with stuff, and think. Um, you know, God, they're so lucky to be like that. Yeah. But when you actually speak to them, like they're more like me than like I knew, but they just know that if they don't do that, then they're, they're, they yeah. know what it's like not to do. Yeah. So it's, it's like, like my, my neighbor Vernon, who's like an 88 year old man, shout out Vernon. Um, you know, he's like proper on it. He gets up at like the crack of dawn every day, walks several miles. Um, he was told like 20 years ago by the doctor that he was, that he was dying hmm. and that he was going to like die soon. And it's almost like he just decided that he wasn't. Mental willpower. He started. Again. He just started start deciding that he was going to wake up every morning and start going for a walk. Mm. So he did. Started, so he walks like several miles at the crack of dawn. I said, bearing in mind, he's like in his late eighties. Then he comes back and then he does like gardening for hours. And I've like seen him at the bottom of my garden. It's not like you know, it's not like he's like you know picking tulips. I'm talking mm. you know proper old school Grafting. vegetable gardener. Like he's like digging. Um, you know, like as I said, a lot of people my age would have a bad back doing the things he does. And he'll sit and he'll go down there and he'll garden sometimes for like two hours straight. Mm. You know. Um, you know, and then, you know, go back, you know, crop his veg, you know, get the veg back, you know, prep his, prep his food for his lunch, go out for another walk, come back, prep his food for his dinner, blah, blah, blah. Maybe watch like an hour or two of telly. But he told me like, he doesn't have sky telly, but the reason he doesn't isn't because, you know, he's like this super disciplined guy that like doesn't enjoy watching telly. Mm. The reason he doesn't have sky is because he enjoys it so much <laughs> that, he would that just if he sit had there it, he watch. knows he would just sit there watching it all day. Yeah. So it's yeah. almost like the thing that I think is the cool takeaway thing from that is it's like, yeah, don't look, don't look at all these people that to you look like super disciplined or super motivated as like they're different from you, you know, because you want to do these things and then it's like they don't. Mm. They want to do it too. It's just, but it's just like they almost want to do it so much. Mm. They know that they can't indulge it, mm, you know? Mm. Yeah, it makes me think as well. Like, I remember, like, because uh, the podcast guy I really like is called Aubrey Marcus. Yeah. And, I'm, and I watched a... Um, he's been on the JRE um, podcast. Mm. Uh, but Joe Rogan was on his podcast, and he was talking to him, and... Uh, Joe Rogan said, like you know, because Aubrey Marcus like uh, kind of tells all with his life. He's like he's very public about what's going on, like uh, with his journeys and all of this kind of stuff. Uh, 
Joe Rogan is not so much. He's like very inquisitive, but he's more like his private life is his private life in certain ways. And yeah, like, like that. You've, I've never seen a picture of his wife or his kids. Or no, like um, uh, and and they were kind of talking about that, and and they were t- and you know say say like Aubrey Marcus if he goes through like a like a depressed thing or or something that's mm. not so right, like he'd be very public. He, he like he uses that to uh, you know like with his audience and things like that to help them to help himself. Like he's on that kind of thing. And he was talking to Joe um, Rogan about it, and like um, he 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 said, you know, like what happens when you get into kind of states like that, or you know, like things that happen. And he said, and it kind of reminds me of what we we're talking about, because he said, like, I don't give myself the opportunity to mm. go to those places. Mm. I keep, I keep, I have, I have my uh, things that I do, my dedications that I that I have in life, and uh, and I keep busy, like I, 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 I because everyone can go down these like dark holes or everyone Every, literally everyone, everyone can everyone. be lazy everyone yep. can like can not know what be to self-pitying do and, yeah and can get depressed and it is it, it, it's a spiral yeah like, like i've been through it so much it's what and, do you like, put, what do you give energy to yeah you know? and like so so yeah do you give these, energy to the negativity or do you give energy to the part of you that wants that to be that something. wants to be a kick-ass human being yeah you know and just by by but you know, kind of like like uh, like not cleverly, but like um, you know, setting up your day in a way that you're giving yourself almost a bit less time to worry about that stuff. Oh, like 100%. That's, that's a that's a good that's a good way to go about it as well, especially 100%. if you do suffer from like um, like those feelings a lot, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's interesting. Like, yeah, you can you can you can be smart about the way you set up your routine. You Definitely, know? man. Mm. Definitely. Anyway, we're gonna listen to a couple of tracks now. When we come back. We're going to get back, just pick up the conversation where we left off. You're listening to Pandora's Box on Aspen Weight Radio. Hope you guys are having a good afternoon. This is Welcome Home Sanitarium oh. by Metallica. That was Mystic Rhythms by Rush. That's definitely one of my favourite Rush songs. Mm. Um, yeah, shout out to Rush. One of Canadian Canadians? <laughs> one of Canada's finest bands. Mm. Um, rest in peace, Neil Peart, their drummer, who um, writ the majority of their songs. Um, really intelligent guy and a great drummer, inspired drummers like I Dave Grohl. That? that he wrote most of the songs? Yeah, he actually wrote most of the songs. Whoa. He was like a super literate guy. Wow. Um, like, it's funny because like probably people like Gene Simmons from Kissing That would think this was naff. Mm-hmm. But like... Um, he used to spend all of his time on the road, like not getting wrecked. He would mm-hmm. go... He would find bookstores mm. he would just go and either buy or withdraw whether it was like a library or a book or, or just a store he would just go get like a load of books and he would just sit in his hotel room and he would just read whoa oh, don't get me wrong he would obviously hang out with um, yeah. the other guys of the band Geddy Lee yeah. the lead singer and bassist and Alex Lifeson the guitarist they would hang out and they would have a laugh mm. but like whenever he would have those quiet moments like in his room late at night if, say mm. two hours before he went to bed he would he would read mm. he wouldn't be like there partying doing cocaine and mm. You know, getting with strippers, he mm. would be there reading. Mm. Just you know, and you know, a lot of Rush's lyrics are very philosophical. You know, um, you know, good. You know, some good words. So he'd write a lot of the lyrics as well. He'd write a lot of the lyrics, yeah. Not wow. all of them. Not mm. all of them. Geddy would write, and they'd all take. They'd all write the music together. Mm. But mm. weirdly, yeah, Neil was the one that wrote a lot of the lyrics. Wow. I said not said that. not not all of them, but probably like seventy five percent. So like the majority mm. of them. Wow. So that's like a cool little fact, but yeah. Um, Rush, just a super influential band. As I said, Neil Peart, the drummer, is a massive influence to um, guys like Lars Ulrich from Metallica, mm. Dave Grohl from mm. Foo Fighters. So even if you're not a fan of Rush, if you're a fan of Metallica or Foo Fighters or lots of other bands, you know, like you've got to respect their place because without bands like Rush, you wouldn't have bands like the Foo Fighters. Mm. Mm. You know, you wouldn't have drummers like Dave Grohl or, or Lars Ulrich or things like that. But um, yeah, we were talking before the um, tracks about just about being a kick-ass person, really. We were using sort of um, Joe Rogan as an as an example. Yeah. And obviously, you look at Joe Rogan; he's got like literally the world's most successful podcast. It's like the most um, well-known and successful UFC commentator. Mm. Um, he uh, is like a hunter; hunts all of his own food. Mm. Um, just a you know, a jujitsu black belt. Oh yeah. Taekwondo black belt. Oh right, I didn't know that. Yeah, he started off doing taekwondo when he was like ah. a little kid. He used to be like ty- he grew up doing like taekwondo tournaments and a everything. Comedian as well, does stand up. <clears throat> Very successful stand up comedian, mm. one of like America's most respected ones. Um, but I remember like you know we were using it as an example in terms of like don't look at these people and be like almost like intimidated or put off like oh you know like they're just super they're humans. so disciplined and I couldn't do that. Yeah. Because I remember like um, listening to this thing with Joan. Do you know that he used to be like addicted to computer games? No. 
Yeah. So he had to go full cold turkey on computer games because he said that, I think it was like the early 90s or... Yeah, it probably would have been the early 90s because I think this is when it came out. Obviously, Joe Rogan's, I think, probably in his like early 50s now. Yeah, about yeah I'd that. say about that. But um, when um, Doom came out, the original Doom game, obviously, it's quite like a famous and well- um, Oh, I remember no, playing yeah. that. My dad <clears throat> yeah. had that on PC. Very, it's like you're basically going around killing monsters and yeah. stuff. Um, but he said he got fully addicted to it. Wow. To the point where like- he went through a stage of like I can't remember I can't remember how long he said it was whether it was like a year might have been more that he like pretty much every day all he did was just play Doom like twelve hours a day he would just eat and s- he would just so like that, that sounds sleep. like me with Witcher I get yeah. into that a oh, bit like Witcher <laughs> me too man me too and he said that it was almost like it's so easy to do it mm. and it's so much fun and yeah. your brain's getting so much pleasure from doing it mm. it was just so easy for him to do it. And it was almost like it was at a stage in his life, you know, he like wasn't really doing that many Taekwondo tournaments anymore. Mm. He was doing like Fear Factory. I think it was called Fear Factory. No, Fear Factor. Oh, It was yeah. like an American oh, program. Oh, so he was like on the TV and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. But I think it was like in between seasons or yeah, something. And yeah. it was like... I suppose if that's your job and you've got that from like here to here, that yeah. when you do that, then you've got all that off time. It's not just like in the evenings. It's like you've got weeks of off time yeah. potentially or whatever, you know. But he said he became fully like addicted to playing it. Wow. So he, he just one day had to be like, I need to go cold turkey. Mm. So he just like literally just threw out all of you know essentially mm. i don't know exactly what he did with it obviously i doubt he just threw it out but he just got rid of it it's funny when you like know something is like that much of a hole in you that you just have to go to cold turkey with it yeah just be like, yeah I'll i think you need to do it for your own good because i think because he knew what it was like already to be a productive person he obviously sort of like you know he'd become a very successful martial arts and uh, martial artist in taekwondo yeah you know he, he it's almost like you can carry that energy of like persistence through to a video game and you'll lose 10 hours yeah you know? <laughs> and it's probably like you know but it, after a while it makes you realize if you do know what it's like to be a productive person you probably realize no, how you're unproductive not, you're yeah because it starts off it's harmless it's how, like because it, it is productive in a way because you're working at something yeah but it's not productive for your life necessarily <laughs> no no definitely and it's i think it's you know it starts off and it's fine you know it's you're not going to do any harm by playing a computer game for a couple of hours mm. you're not do you know I, but then when you get that into it to the yeah. point where you're wasting your life playing it like living vicariously through it yeah not through your do, avatar do you know, do you know, do you know when i realized Earth, like yeah like when i realized that that it was i just had to turn the game off what was that i was playing do you know fable which is, i know uh, i've never played it uh so fable is a bit like you know like i know it's art. like a fantasy yeah, sort of game. game i know it's very like highly respected i got, I got blazed once and I, <laughs> I i i chopped a piece of wood i chopped a piece of wood for like two and a half hours just to get like thousands man. more coins man from there. and yeah. it's just like you're like why am i doing why this? am i just chopping this piece of wood as a dwarf you know, in this fantasy <laughs> as world. a dwarf yeah that just makes it doesn't it as a dwarf um yeah man definitely i mean there's loads of games that it's like similar you know like um i can't i'm come tr- struggling to think of an exact example but i know i've been playing games before and stuff where like you try and get up a side of a mountain or something and you're like i can get up this mountain. well but. either that or like you're doing something to enhance your character in a certain way you're basically yeah. trying to make your character yeah, 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 awesome yeah, that's it, yeah and then you realize like I am like me in real life, like this body that I have. This is my real character. Yeah. <laughs> in the in this 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 like fake character that I'm playing. He's head, in this he's game. He's ripped and he's yeah. Got he's ripped. All he's this ripped. Stuff going for him. All the women in the game love him. Yeah. All the guys in the game think he's awesome. Either Look at one. My love him. handles. Yeah. In the, real yeah. Life. Yeah. They, they either want him to be his friend or they they like respect or fear him. Yeah. Because of how much of a formidable force he is. And meanwhile, you're sat there, your arms are getting skinnier, your belly's <laughs> getting fatter, you're getting more spots, your hair's getting greasier. Uh, you know what I mean? You haven't worked out in weeks. And it's yeah. like, uh, with me, that's always a thing. And it's like, okay, like yeah. I do Better like playing video games every now and again. But to me, it's like the thing in like, remember, like the, the, the version of the, the, your, the, the character that you're seeing in the, the, the mirror, mm. that should, it always needs to take prominence over... Yeah. The video game ones. Yeah. Because if you could just see it as like, this is your character on Earth. Yeah. Make that one the one, you know, rather than training up your character in this video game, train yourself up. Mm. If you can go and work out in the game mm. to get yourself buff and mm. get these amazing swords and that, mm. go do it in real life. Yeah. <laughs> you I know? mean, you are, you are the hero in your own movie story, really, aren't mm. you? Like, you need to think of it like that a bit more. And like, yeah. uh, do you know what I mean? And you like... need to put, you need to, di- you know, mm-hmm. put energy 
and time into developing yourself mm. you know I mentally physically yeah. emotionally yeah and like i know i know we, we were talking about loads of stuff off air as well having a big chat but that whole thing about what we're saying about like sphere of influence and stuff mm. like that like yeah like you, you, that's the best thing you can do to make a change in life it's like well <laughs> gandhi like you know be mm. the change you wish to see in the world like yeah. you know that by working on yourself and all you know that all just just grassroots around you like what you can do like that's going to have so much more impact that's yeah. that's the only thing that's going to impact your part of the world you know definitely yeah definitely you know get yourself i said it's easier said than done and i, d- I definitely don't want to sound like you know we're, like we're like preaching but get yourself into like a positive space if there's if there's people around you that make you feel negative for whatever reason and maybe you shouldn't be giving them most of those people your time and energy anymore. Mm. You know, if there are people around you that make you feel good about yourself and about life in general, mm. hang out with them. Yeah. If yeah. there are people that are good influences on you that, you know, are encouraging you to do something, you mm. know, good that maybe you've been, don't, you don't have the confidence right now to do or something and they're, they're encouraging you to do it, then listen to those people and develop whatever mm. those skills are, mm. you know, and, and, and do those things. You'll feel good about yourself and don't feel like you have to be awesome and it's straight away. Mm. Your level isn't what's important it's the effort you put in yeah it's whether like it's a, learning violin or yeah. working out or anyway you, sorry man sorry to I, cut you off we've got to play some tracks now but when we come back we're going to pick up the conversation and um Drewzy's going to let us know what was on his mind this is um mastodon's brand new track tear drinker check it out this is so good so catchy oh that is michelle or that was michelle by lynn and skinner love lynn and skinner Rest in peace, all the members that died in plane crash, like the lead singer Ronnie Van Zant, um, and also they really they had like a brand new lead guitarist at the time, um, and I think him and his sister died. They were both oh. in the band. She was like a backing singer, so it was like both of them died. Savage. Savage. He was like a really good guitarist as well. But yeah, Lovelin and Skinner, um, just proper cool swagger, um, just awesome music. Um, love that track, Michelle. Before that, we had uh, Mastodon's new track, Tear Drinker. You are listening to Pandora's Box on. Aspen Week Radio. Um, you might even be watching on YouTube. So um, thanks for chilling with us, guys. Um, I'm your host, as always, this time of the week, Mr. Callum Waite. Or is my name, in fact, Obadiah Penny Whistle. <laughs> this week we have Mr. Drew Armstrong with me, Hello. as usual. Do you want to give yourself an alias today, man? Elm. Elm. Today I'm we have Elm. Elm, Elm and witty. Obadiah. So um, before uh, we listen to Mastodon's new track, I rudely cut you off, man. Oh, no, that's all right. So what were you going to say? Um, well, what we were talking about, we were talking about, it's not um, it's it's not about f- uh, how great you are, it's about what mm. you try oh, and yeah, do. Oh, yeah, 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 know? yeah, yeah. And um, it just made <clears> me think, I, I've um, tr- been trying to get into a little bit of yoga, like, uh, like stra- I, I have on and off over the last couple of years, but I always kind of stray away from it, but... I like really like yin yoga, which is mm. like you know just way more just stretching and almost like you go into these stretches for like prolonged like four or five minutes and really just releases all your joints and stuff. And it just reminds me what like uh, one of the teachers was saying about that. And it's like don't don't worry if you can get your head down to the floor or like you get or your hamstrings are super tight or whatever. Mm. If you can feel what if you can feel a stretch then you are doing, it's doing good for you, you know, like don't, as long as you can feel something like, like in that, and it's, it just reminded me of that, like what you were yeah. saying, you know, as long as you're doing the work, like it doesn't matter what level you're at, like you're doing the work and it's going to be good for you. So yeah. And I think I, like, point. I think sometimes people are so paralyzed by that. I know like one of the reasons why a lot of people don't go to the gym, just from my own experience of talking to people is they think that like the people that are in there that are like seasoned vets of the yeah. gym, like gym rats, and gym bunnies are gonna judge them, or like something. laugh at them yeah. or something. But I can tell you what, as somebody that um, takes clients sometimes to train myself, um, I have a little like strength and conditioning like like business called Team Volga um, Training Systems. Um, as somebody that like trains people myself sometimes, uh, I do not care whatsoever about people's level. Mm. I just care about the effort they put in. Yeah. If someone's putting the same effort that I'm putting in, mm. that I respect, I will respect them. Yeah. That's yeah. all. That's all. And that's a, that's you know, it. like no, you know, like you know, I'm certainly not trying to make out the like you know, I'm like the strongest, the most accomplished gym goer in the world. But you know, like I've got videos of me squatting 150 kgs for 10 reps, 180 kilos for five. I've you know videos of me deadlifting, um, hex bar deadlifting 260 kilos. Um, doing 240 kilos for four reps, you know, um, weighted chin-ups, um, 
you know, even though I'm 100 kilos as it is and dips and things like that. But I don't, if I'm working out with somebody that can only lift the bar, mm. it doesn't matter. If mm. they're putting the same effort in just lifting nothing but the bar, yeah. as I am lifting, as, as I am squatting 150 plus kilos. Yeah. It's not about the weight, it's that's about all, the That's all I care about. Yeah. As long as you can tell that they're giving it their all, that is all that matters. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, and uh, you could be, you know, maybe they might be trying, I could tell that they're putting even more effort into me and then I will find that person inspiring. I'll be yeah. inspired by that person. Yeah, man. You know, because it's, it, what matters isn't the level, it's it's the effort. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's what's important. So, Actually going for it. And it's like, you know, um, you're, like, you're like a ridiculously good guitarist, you know, mm. like. Cheers, man. No, nah, well, no, you just are. Like, go check out Drew. Um, so Drew's like lead guitarist in a band called Death by Kai. So, you know, proper metal style, like shredding. Um, so go check them out, Death by Kai on Spotify. And Drew's also um, like a solo musician. There's like Drew Bag, do like looping, but also just like a um, standard acoustic sort of and singing mm. stuff. And you everything from like rapping right through to just more like beautiful acoustic stuff. Mm. But regardless of whether you're playing acoustic or electric, you're like one of the best guitarists I've ever known personally. Um, but it's like, yeah, like you obviously wouldn't judge somebody as a guitarist on no, not at all. their level. Yeah. If they wanted to get good, you know, then it's just, you just put in the time yeah. you can't expect to be as good a guitarist as you yeah we need and... to stop compare like comparing yeah. because it was like like a gig i just did on the weekend i think i was talking to you about this as well and like yeah. uh the artist i was playing um uh, play, sharing the show with so um S- semantics like check them out really cool loop pedal artist as well and um it was like you know we both had a completely different flavor mm. But um, but you could tell that we've almost both put a lot of effort into our craft, like what what we wanted to do, like yeah. the, the way it was, and that shows. And the way that creativity like flows with a person, it's a completely different form. It's a different, completely different ex- expression in every single different person. And as long as you give time to that, like like what you're saying, effort, like it will flower in a completely different way. And yeah. that's beautiful in its own way. Yeah, it and 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 some people will be more drawn to it, and some people will be more drawn to that but like uh to something different but you know it's 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 you, you can you can that's what's so good about music you can like shit bands can share the stage who are different like we were talking about it as well i think we, i think you were saying about like uh, like machine head and slayer oh a, yeah 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 yeah, yeah shared a when stage. machine head sort of like first broke into the european market when they released their first album burn my eyes their sort of big breakthrough in Europe was because Slayer took them on tour, basically. Mm. So, so that was a that was a completely different sound. Mm. But um, you know, the fans could appreciate it, and they yeah. could see, you know, that. And I, I think that shines through. It was similar it. enough. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 yeah. was, it was different, but it was similar enough that anybody that would like Slayer could listen to that and be like, "That's awesome." Yeah. You know, and the next yeah. thing you know. You're like a worldwide massive band, you know, yeah, rather than and, being and just like, like a national name band. Yeah, and it, and, and it can be inspirational, like rather than comparing yourself to that other band and being like, oh, he, they do that way better than me, or they they sound way heavier, or they sound way more groovy and stuff. It's just like, oh, that's cool. Like, yeah, you, you were you were inspired by the. You can tell they put a lot of effort into getting good at what they do. You know. Yeah, definitely, and I think I think a lot of what it comes down to is just like putting hours in. Yeah. So it's like so it's like saying about how good of a guitarist you are so like, i play guitar as well but to be honest i've probably only put half as many hours into playing the guitar as drew has like, don't get me wrong drew is naturally a better guitarist than me so say if we hadn't ever practiced and we both picked up a guitar drew's rate drew would improve faster than me because he's just naturally better and you just got to oh, accept in life no you are and you've just naturally got to you've got to accept that some people are going to be natural naturally better at certain things in life yeah. than, than uh, others. It's your isn't you it? Know? Some people are going to pick up art quite quickly. Some people are going to mm. pick up weight training quite quickly. Some people are going to pick up running quickly. Some people are going to pick up playing guitar or violin quickly. But at the end of the day, you have a, you have a, 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 a natural talent anyway and you've put in twice as many hours in me, as me. So is it surprising that you're twice as good? Of course mm. it's not. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And it's like, you know, I've put in a ridiculous amount of hours since I first started going to the gym when I was 15 I've put in a ridiculous amount of hours in the gym mm. I've more or less trained like if not every week like pretty much every month since the first time I ever had a workout mm. so it's not surprising that I can deadlift and squat yeah. quite a lot of weight it's not yeah. because it's not because I'm it's naturally good mm. I didn't just walk in the gym one day and do it mm. I built up to it mm. through graft 
and mm. through determination and also over... an extra aptitude as well like your, yeah. your body yeah, I was like, always... and all of that kind of stuff and yeah and, I was and, quite like a big strong rugby player and your, and your um, uh, the, the mind you yeah. know what you were saying about the, the kind of mind that you have to be able to do certain things like the like that Wilds thing we were talking yeah. about like, you know like that that suits like you know every like it's just that thing like everyone has their own flavour yeah like are you going to put, gonna, put you... the hours into yeah. your flavour <laughs> are you going to use your energy in that in turning something that's going to mentally and physically benefit you um or are you going to put it into partying and wasting mm. your money and getting mm. in trouble you mm. know like because you know it's up to you to decide where you put your energy to and yeah. like to me training is a release and like mu- things like music is a release yeah um you know art is a release yeah are you going to put is that going to be your release or is it just going to be drinking and doing mm. drugs and you know and for me this is what we're talking about as well like comparison was a real dangerous game for me because i i like self-consciously like like compared myself to like so many people mm. and like you say like i i did have like a natural natural like aptitude towards like music and the guitar and like playing and stuff like that but you still compare yourself to everyone else like you need to stop like i i needed to tell myself that i have to stop doing that because all it was doing is bringing me like pain and bringing me like yeah. frustration because there'll always be someone that has more of maybe more of a natural aptitude to the, even the things that you're into or somebody and, that's put twice as many hours yes. as you yeah you know exactly because or they're both. 10 years older or yeah, something you know? you know yeah or both and yeah. um and it's like and and yeah and like just just concentrate on on you, on you you know yeah. like uh, like what you can do and and be proud of that because um that's you know that's the only way you that's can do it about like it really. it really doesn't like matter like or it really just is completely unproductive if you start comparing yourself to people because it's a bit like what i was saying earlier about you know um about training and stuff like compared to say the world's strongest man yeah i'm like, i'm weak yeah but compared to like the average guy off the street that's never worked out i'm like would be like twice as strong as him yeah. if not more yeah. you know so it's like well everything's relative yeah everything's relative what's you know? relative to you yeah 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 what's exactly so to don't compare yourself to other games? people yeah don't compare mm. yourself to the you know to somebody that's never their done. Their story's different. Yeah, their their body's different. Yeah, they're exactly. Like, you know, just compare yourself to who you were yesterday, yeah, and just focus man. on slight improvements. Mm. And if you just focus on focus on slightly improving at something every year, then in ten years time you're going to be good at it, mm. and other people will recognise that. Mm. You know. Yeah, and like you say, it's not it's not um, that that greatness may come that greatness that you strive <clears> for so much like when you. When, when you get frustrated that you're not there yet. Yeah. Like, but it's, it's that <coughs> slow graft. Like, if you do, don't get disheartened by the fact that you're, like, not great and you're not, like, on top of the world right now. Yeah. But just, like, because that's Pick what away. I struggled with as well. Like, Pick I'm away like, at it. Oh, I know. I'm, re- I'm real good at this. It's like, why, why am I not, like, why am I, like, headlining, like, like festivals? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but yeah. it's, like, it's not about that. The more you get stuck in that, the more it's going to, you know what I mean? Just yeah. slog away and you'll, you'll see the developments in the end, you know? Definitely, man. Right, we're going to listen to some tracks now. This next up is a classic Deftones track. This is Be Quiet and Drive. Enjoy, baby. That was Fell on Black Days by Soundgarden. Rest in peace. Chris Cornell, obviously lead singer of Soundgarden and Audio Slave, took his life too young. So um, rest in peace, man. Shame that you had to uh, go to the big pillow in the Mm. sky early. Chilling out with um, Kurt Cobain and Lane Staley and Chester Bennington. You know, they say the... Brightest flames burn quickest. Mm. But yeah, no, it's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, man, totally. You are listening to Pandora's Box on Aspen Point Radio. I'm your host, as always, this time of the week. Obadiah Penny Whistle. And with me this afternoon is Elm. Hey, what's up, I'm Elm. <laughs> it's Elm. We've been chatting about all sorts of interesting stuff so far. I want to talk to you, man, about um, a book I heard about recently. I've looked into it a little bit. It's called um, My Life with, An- with the Eskimo. Oh, right. And it's like this uh, story about this... I think it's 19th century, it might be 18th century. Anyway, it's like this proper old school explorer, hunter bloke from, um, I think, I think the UK. Um, I probably should have done a little bit more research into it before chatting it, but I'm just going to go with it because I thought there was some really interesting stuff about it. And um, I think he was the man at the time that I travelled up furthest north and had mm. like had the most contact with the Eskimo ever. Mm. And apparently he was this like crazy bloke, had like ridiculously long beard and hair, just like obviously always just in like all these animal furs and stuff to keep mm. warm just look absolutely crazy. Um, but he's he's got a book called My Life with the Eskimo. Um, I don't suppose you do me a favour, man. Would you, like, just on your phone or something, would you find out what his name was 
and find out what year the book was released because he he writ like his that Marlowe with the Eskimo is like his memoirs of his travels, but he's got some really really interesting stories, um, and I think it almost like, in a way shows like just how interesting like humankind is. <laughs> I and, don't know if I'd be able to spe- say his name, but it's Vil Halma Stephenson. Oh, okay. Maybe he wasn't British then. By the sounds of things, it sounds like maybe he was like Scandinavian or something. It looks like. My life with the Eskimo. Maybe it sounds like maybe he was like Norwegian or something. Uh. But um, anyway, some proper like hilarious stories that I heard about it. So apparently once, um, so, so apparently his favourite thing to eat mm. was wolf. Whoa. So his favourite thing to eat was, was wolves, which is like really strange even in hunting circles because mm. most hunters like don't eat wolves because apparently they're not very tasty oh it's like apparently their meat just doesn't taste good mm. you know oh. um obviously most hunters like say in like north america or scandinavia and stuff they hunt many things like deer mm. you know elk mm. um goats you know things like longhorn sheep mm. you know all sorts of things like wild turkeys but apparently wolf just doesn't taste good mm. you know um so interesting f- for that in general apparently it was a really interesting story about how once um he found um, a whale tongue um, on like washed up on the shore. Like, a whale some, tongue somewhere very far up north in the circle. So like a like a well a, a dead whale, I yeah. guess a dead uh. whale. Like um, and he he took out the tongue mm. and he boiled it mm. and he and he started eating it. And apparently it tasted really really salty. So he kept boiling it. Apparently he ended up boiling it for something like three hours and he ate it. And he was like saying, you know, it was tasted like r- ridiculously salty. You know, he'd had whale before and it was ridiculously salty. Apparently, one of the guys that was in his party later on that day asked like a local Eskimo mm. how long it, the whale had been there. And the Eskimo said three years. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. I know. I just like when I heard that, I thought that was like so mental. But Whoa. I guess like. I suppose because of the cold. and the Yeah, thing, it, it was it so far like, north of the Arctic Circle yeah. that it was like. It would just be frozen, preserved yeah. for three years. And like apparently none of them got ill or anything. Whoa. You know? This is crazy, isn't it? A bit of salted ex- Eskimo tongue. It's amazing, really, how it could have even, like, you know, like survived that long there without something else eating. Yeah, like predators and stuff. Even, right? like, birds. Mm. I mean, mm. I don't know exactly. Polar bears. <laughs> yeah, I don't know enough to, like, know what, um, you know, like, what exactly up there could eat a whale carcass. Mm. I mean, obviously, like everywhere's got its its um, ecosystem and its food I chain. I would say so. wolves and bears, like wolves and pet. I don't think bears. wolves um, are up, they're up f- far north. Oh, okay. I'm also mm. trying to remember um, which side it is that has polar bears. Mm. Oh no, I think it is. I think it is up north, isn't it? Because I know, I know, I'm thinking. Um, there's the Arctic and the Antarctic, isn't it? Mm. And what I remember one of them has polar bears and the other one doesn't. But I'm imagining it's probably the Arctic. That has the polar bears. Mm. Would you, sorry, man, would you check that out for me as well? Yeah. Sorry, dude. (laughs) Um, Just because I'm, you know, I think it's interesting to know. But um, there's some really, really interesting tales about this guy as well. So uh, obviously he came from the. uh, Yeah, they're in the Arctic, but not Antarctica. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought so. So yeah, you would think that like polar bears would have eaten this whale carcass, wouldn't you? So Mm. I don't know how, I don't know how it survived or why it survived, but anyway. It's too salty. Too salty. (laughs) The the tongue was too salty. Anyway, apparently there's these hilarious tales of, like, one-upmanship with the Eskimo. All right. So this guy coming from, like, Europe, coming from, like, the Western world, who at the time, you know, the Industrial Revolution had taken place. We already had, um, like, advanced maths, science, Mm. language, knowledge of the stars. Obviously, relatively speaking, not, like, to obviously the level we do today, but this was only a couple hundred years ago, so they had, like, medicine and all that stuff. Anyway, these people were essentially just nomadic tribes. Mm. You know, they still were very much like just praying to gods for food and for like hoping that they would have a good fish. And, mm. you know, they saw like the stars and the moons as like gods and things like that and like had like totems and things like that. So they would, but it, uh, hilarious tales of him interacting with these Eskimos. So, like, apparently, for instance, he would be like, um, they obviously they didn't have any guns or anything. So they would be like, so we would like say things to them like, yeah, we've back home. We've got these, um, we've got these things called guns, and there are people that can like shoot and kill a deer from like a hundred yards. Mm. Um, and he thought that this would like blow their mind, but it's almost like their response almost like tells you something funny about like the human mind and like almost like the way that humans are. Mm. 
But apparently they weren't impressed by anything he said, and he was just like, we used to know somebody from a tribe who could fire an arrow over a mountain and kill a deer like that. <laughs> and then he would be like, we've got explorers from the country that I live that have been to the other side of the world and back. And, you know, um, these Eskimos had like never even left. Like They hadn't gone like 30 miles. Mm. Like They hadn't left like the 30 mile radius that they were born in. Mm. And they'd be like, we once knew somebody that went to the moon and back. Yeah. this was like 200 years ago do you know what I mean and apparently he just kept saying these things to them and like no matter what he said they had like this one upmanship with yeah, him yeah. and in the end he just gave up because it was like he thought he was going to like amaze them with all of these like amazing things of the western world but it was like everything he said mm. they just had this like this better version so he That's just like brilliant. gave up I thought that was like it was like a hilarious mm. a hilarious <laughs> tale anyway you know it was like hilarious tales of one-upmanship and it almost like shows something about like the human character doesn't it about how you know you're always going to be like um uh, like the, I know like that's not really what I was going to say like grass is greener on the other side it's not quite the right term is it but um I, I think <clears> they probably had like quite a lot of pride and stuff yeah and, like, do you know what I mean and they like they're like we're not gonna we're not gonna just let like yeah you know, they, let this guy think that he's going to be better us from, from coming from It was just so funny the how they just weren't impressed. Yeah, yeah. It was almost like, like they seemed like he was he was telling them fanciful tales, so they were just telling him an even fancier fool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I heard something really interesting as well, which I thought you, uh, you'd you find pretty interesting. Is, um, you know, um, we've talked about it before off camera. Um, you know how about all the buffalo were like, majority of the buffalo were like wiped out mm. in North America. Mm. And um, a lot of this has been blamed on, like, uh, like the white settlers, like the European settlers and stuff mm. in America. Well, one thing I thought was quite interesting, actually, apparently there's this new evidence coming out now to say um, that is sort of still the case, but it's a little bit more uh, complicated than that. So I expect a lot of you listening will know that the first European settlers that really properly discovered um, and explored the you know north and south america were the spanish mm-hmm. obviously cortez quite famously um <clears throat> and they sort of went through uh america sort of causing a lot of havoc really mm. hey anyway, what's quite interesting is obviously these spanish explorers they wrote down in great detail like everything that they discovered in the americas so i'm talking like fauna flora they talked about all the different animals and plants and stuff that they discovered and they would document it What's quite interesting, people have just sort of started to realise now, is that there's no mention of buffalo in it. Mm. No mention of buffalo at all. If it should have been at that time, like, a lot of buffalo there. Yeah. Mm. Right. So, but what's interesting about it is, it's not just like as simple as that, as like, oh, okay, well, they obviously, the numbers are already dwindling. Basically, the Spanish introduced smallpox to America, mm-hmm. and... Un- which is like savage for the local uh, Native American Indian tribes, whatever you want to call them. But it wiped out 80% of the human population of the Americas. 80%, right? So that is, like, mind-boggling. That's insane. I mean, when you think it? about, say, like, the recent uh, coronavirus pandemic, pandemic yeah. that's, that's taken place in... in uh, Imagine that, 80% of the population gone. I mean, it's not even 1% of the population, was it? Obviously, that's been passed away from coronavirus. No. Not, no. Even, not even 1%. So no. imagine... 80% yeah. of the entire continent of America. Yeah. North and South American tribes, 80% wiped out. So what's quite interesting then, then you've got like a lull for about 30 years, right? And then what happened is a lot of British and Dutch explorers suddenly started coming to the continent. Mm. What happened is, is when the Dutch and the the British and and, and the French started coming into the Americas, then in all of their documentation of fauna and flora, Mm. there is suddenly widespread talk of literally hundreds of buffalo roaming the plains. Ah. So what we think happened now is that inadvertently, because of the by mm. accidentally, by the Spanish accidentally wiping out eighty percent of Native American populations through smallpox, mm. it looks like they were that they were the buffalo were already so savagely hunted by the Native American tribes. It's funny for us to think almost because I think in movies and stuff we always like see the Native American tribes almost as like. There's this vast wilderness of America, and then these like you know, there's like the Cherokee, and then there's the Mohican. Totally and, one with nature, and well, not not just that, but they seem quite like sp- uh, scarce. Fast, yeah, yeah, right. you know what I mean. Like place there's place. very, but I guess the Americas would have been much more heavily populated mm. than we realised probably. Mm. But then obviously because they were wiped and they were hunting buffalo almost to extinction, 
Wow. And so then the Spanish didn't even really encounter them. Yeah. Not to the point where they didn't where document they document anyway. them, yeah. And then like 30 years later, when the mm. Brits and the French and the Dutch and the Portuguese and stuff started coming in, mm. all of a sudden it was like they were everywhere. So it's yeah. like almost like inadvertently by wiping out 80% of the Native American population, they like saved this buffalo population and they just like blew up. Yeah. I it's mean, obviously, what's quite sa- what's quite savage, obviously, is then the white pe- well, the Europeans almost hunted them to extinction again. Yeah. Um, the good news about that, though, is that there's been through conservation efforts, there is a lot been like a lot of um, like it's rewilding the term, like a lot of through conservation efforts, buffalo have been recovering. Mm. So I know there's like big buff- buffalo populations now in Mexico, mm. in North America again. Um, I mean, you can go to like Yellowstone Park, which is obviously like a national park where you're like not where people aren't, aren't allowed to hunt. Mm. You're not allowed to do anything like that. And you can just go and see buffalo. Mm. In fact, there's actually like it's it's pretty funny, really, just because it's pretty stupid. But um, you see videos of like tourists like getting too close to buffalo. Like buffalo are very testosterone fueled, like stupid creatures, really. Yeah. <laughs> but they're just like tanks, aren't they? Yeah. Like they could if they like. If it rammed your car as hard as they it could, could, flip it over. Yeah, probably. Mm. You know, if you were like in like a, a fairly, you know, average to small sized car mm. and it was a big, big buffalo, you know. Um, but yeah, and you see people like you know videos of people literally getting like tackled by buffalo, and they just go flying in the air, like 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 you would like like be able to throw a cat. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like that's that's what it looks like. You know, that's crazy. And it's like man, powerful like, things. It's crazy how they used to hunt them, isn't it? Like they used mm. to literally just run them off cliffs. Oh, right. savage! So savage for the buffalo. You can watch. You can look, you can look at um, pictures online on, on Google and stuff of like very very old from like the earliest cameras mm. that were like set up in the Wild West, and it's just like thousands of buffalo skulls. Do you remember I showed you mm. before? Mm. And it's like you can just see pictures, and it's like walls, like and I mean like big walls that have mm. just been almost like made walls for lack of a better word they obviously i don't think they were trying to make a wall but you know what i mean like wall piles. big walls like mm-hmm. piles of just buffalo skulls mm. and there's like thousands of buffalo skulls mm. it's crazy yeah man insane yeah why, why did they um why did they used to ki- like kill so many in that way like why why did they not just hunt i think ones that uh, they needed for the meat because of profit i think you know really? it's a, it was a, a like life skinning life skinning them and everything yeah i, I think life back then was probably more s- similar to life today as people would realize so it's like say say um say you were a hunter and that's how you made your trade opportunity they would take it and and yeah they would make as much money as they can yeah so say you were a hunter right you would make your money on how many skins you sold and how much meat you sold Mm -hmm. and how many like you know ant you know like antlers or or horns Mm -hmm. you sold because that's how you made your trade Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. also like things like fat um back in those days fat like certain animals fat would be used Mm. For like to like cooking light, and... to, yeah, for cooking and to like light torches, mm. even to make things like oils, perfumes, mm. things like that. So back in those days, like we have different substitutes now, so it's not as important to us. Back in those yeah, days, from like farming and stuff like that, but they they would actually just get it from they the would, animals. They would render the fat from different animals, buffaloes, bears. Mm. Um, all sorts of things. Oh, I remember you saying bear fat. It's like yeah, what was it? Was it like they would, really they would call it bear killing? grease, and apparently it was like the gold mm. of north america like mm. literally like if you were a bear hunter back in those days mm. in like the you know like the colonization of america days the european colony days like you would be like in modern day terms like a millionaire mm. if you were a good bear hunter and you could like sell bear grease because they used to use it for everything mm. like lanterns cooking perfume obviously back in those days the same as today um like a lot of women like their perfume Mm. All the best perfume was made with bear grease. You know, cooking, apparently it's the most delicious thing to cook with. Wow. It was like the creme de la creme of cooking oil of the day. If you mm. cooked something in bear fat, apparently it would make it taste amazing. Mm. Even if like the food itself wasn't very good, you were cooking. You cook it in bear fat, boom, mm. amazing. Um, all sorts of things. They used to, you know, beard oils, mm. shampoos. <laughs> they used to make all, soap. They would make, mm. they, you could make like 50 different products from bear grease. So, was there ever a, um, like a, a danger of the bear population like dying out? I don't think so. I know that there obviously are some states in America where bears used to live there and they're not anymore. Mm. I think California is like a good example of that. So I know, for example, on the on the California state flag, mm. they have a picture of a bear. Mm. But at the same time, it's almost like funny because there are no there are no yeah. grizzly bears in California anymore. Mm. I don't. I'm not. Can't remember if there are black bears. I don't think there even are black bears. Mm. I know that they have like cougars and stuff like that. 
I mean, you, you know, um, in uh, California. But it's, yeah, I know that they used to have natively have um, like brown bears and mm. whereas nowadays it's more places like Montana, you know, um, what's the place I'm thinking of? Um, Arkansas. You know, there are lots of states that have bears. Mm. You know, I don't think the bear population is like, in you know, certainly not endangered. Yeah. And I know that like um, as part of conservation, you know, um, you can get, if you're a hunter in America nowadays, you can get tags to say hunt grizzlies really yeah but it's like part of the but they do it for conservation i think people that um maybe don't understand too much about it almost like think of it as like this uh they don't understand it like Evil. yeah yeah and, and don't get me wrong i'm not saying i want to start going out with like shooting bears or i think that's a good thing to do but i think we need to realize like so, so say that you get a tag and like a, a responsible hunter they'll go and like kill like an old an old um an old boar. grizzly they call them they call them like boars and sows mm. a bit like pigs mm. they'll go kill an old boar grizzly with the idea being that like old boars will kill young boars mm. so by killing the old boars mm. you're breeding new life into the grizzly bear population mm. do you know what i mean because mm. otherwise you get like you know the same in breeding problems that you would have with human beings things like that um they also do the same thing with like old elks and things like that. Mm. You know, because I said you get these big old bull elks and they're so big and so strong. If they're killing all the young male ones before the young male ones get as big and strong as them, mm. then the diversity in the gene pool is just not there. Mm. Things like that, you know. So it's like it is actually important for conservation. It's almost like, like don't get me wrong, as human beings, we can do a lot of damage to the planet, but we can also, through being like intelligence and through um, like analyzing populations and, you know, population control, like, manipulate it in subtle ways to make mm. it as, as good mm. as possible and to be fair i think in north america you've probably got the best balance mm. as possible of that mm. obviously like in britain in the uk where we live like bears and wolves are native to the uk mm. it's just that they were hunted to extinction so long ago we just don't even think about it anymore yeah. i think um the last wolf if i'm right the last seen wolf in the wild i think which was hunted to death I think it was in something like 1200 AD. Really? Yeah, it's so like 800 years ago. Whoa. And I think the last bear was like way before that. I can't remember exactly when. It's such I, a shame. You could probably Google it, but I don't know when the last bear was hunted, but it was like, yeah, bears and, as I said, bears and wolves are native to the UK, mm. you know? The same way that you can find them in Scandinavia. It's not really a, uh, surprising, you know? They're, yeah, in, they're yeah. in Scandinavia to this yeah. day. They're in like certain Similar places. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're going to play a song now. This is Queen with Innuendo. When we come back after the break, we're going to wrap up the show. Cheers for being here with us this afternoon, guys. That was Innuendo by <laughs> Queen. <laughs> You're listening to Pandora's Box on Aspen Week Radio. Cheers for being with us here this afternoon. You guys are having a good day. I've been your host, as always, Obadiah Penny Whistle. With me this afternoon, as usual, is Elm. Hey, I'm Elm, and it's been good talking to you. You've had a you had a gig the other day, didn't you? I did, man. Yeah. So where was it? North Devon. Yeah, it was in a place called Biddeford. Oh, Biddeford. Biddeford, and I'd never I I kept getting the name wrong before. I kept saying Bradford on blah blah and all this stuff. But yeah, yeah it, was, it was in Biddeford, and it was it was a really nice place, really nice venue, like proper like like club. Like Who did you play club. with again? A guy called Samantics. Sam Antics. Yeah. So that was like um, more like your loop stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, like full full in the loop. Tales yeah. of the loop. <laughs> yeah, man. So tell us about it. Oh, it's an awesome, awesome club called um, the Palladium Club. Mm. And it almost reminded me of like Prague days. You know, like you get those proper music clubs. Yeah. You know, and uh, really cool stage, amazing sound system, all like soundproofed on the stage. I swear, I've never had such a good sound on, on really? stage. Really? Ever? I could just hear what, everything. Like including like the Death by Kai stuff? Or? Yeah, man. Yeah? Like literally perfection what did you put that down to just like the acoustics think, of the room i think or? i think that it was the room shape and size it yeah. was quite um it, it wasn't like massively like tall or anything it was quite like boxy and long and um and then the stage was really cool it was like it wasn't too big um but they they'd had like they had like soundproofing all over the walls yeah. so like so all around you so normally on normally on a stage you've got like hard walls and it's like like re all the sounds reflecting off the hard walls mm. but this this was obviously just absorbing Dead sound. the sound so, so it was so, more like pure so it was live sound going out because mm. there was no soundproofing on any of the walls going out to the crowd so that was like proper just like a venue but then on stage it was just like damp dampened sound yeah so you could just hear everything so clearly and there was no feedback on stage like awesome. no matter what we did to the mics so i wasn't getting any feedback um 
really cool um semantic's been doing the 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 club circuit and just the uk circuit for like years now played a few gigs with him in bridgewater at the cobblestones um so yeah i didn't know he played down in bridgewater yeah yeah i've supported him a couple times in bridgewater as well um which is why he kind of asked me about this gig because he like, obviously seen me play then but um yeah, he's pulled a big crowd. Like, like he, he's obviously been doing the circuit for a long time. He's just been grafting. Yeah, he's been grafting. And, and I, I saw something special that night. I was like, you know, like, seriously, man, like, this is good achievement. Like, yeah. just like, you could tell people were all there to see him and that followed him and everything. And, um, yeah, yeah, it shows what, what we were talking about earlier about putting the work in, you know, like he's he's just been slugging away at it for years. And, um, and also, yeah, that venue, like... Um, I don't think there's too many like real hardcore like music venues in that area or in, or in Biddeford and stuff, and uh, you can tell that it's got a reputation for itself for a good night, you know. Mm. So um, lots of people turned up, and yeah, it's awesome. Very that sounds ins- awesome. Inspiring. Have you got any like other gigs in the pipeline with like your loop and stuff? Or? Um, no, not yet. I'm gonna work on like I had, to, I, I had clarity that night, and I thought right, he had he had all these albums and stuff, and I've always got things going on, songs and stuff like. But I'm gonna. It's just inspired you to like hustle with it yeah, a bit more. Gonna and- record an album, got something then that can go out, and uh, hopefully get more gigs. What about stuff. like Death by Kai? Is there, like any gigs yeah, in the pipeline some, for the we metal? Got, we got some gigs coming up. Yeah, we've got um, we've got one on uh, end of this month um, yeah. at Cobbles and. Yeah, you ha- have to visit um, facebook.com forward slash death by Kai. Uh, check out the events on there. We've got a few coming up. Nice one, man. We've come to the end of a show. Thanks for being with us this afternoon, guys. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave you with Soma by Smashing Whoa. Pumpkins. Love this track. Come back and chill with us next Wednesday at 7 p.m. for more mm-hmm. Pandora's Box. I don't know what we'll be ta- talking about next week. We're just going to see what happens. It'll be eventful and it'll be beautiful. And if you've been watching on YouTube, thanks for being here with us, babies. (laughs) See you next time.